For the second video, we're going to look at two things. First, we're going to discuss the distributive property when it comes to radicals. And then the other thing that we're going to look at is using conjugates as it applies to radicals. L, S, there we go. All right. Uh, when we do the distributive property, there's two problems that I'd want to uh, discuss. The first one is when we have just say a um, 4 times, oh, I don't know, 2 minus 3 root 4. Um, and that's pretty simple because when we use the distributive property, what that means is we're just going to just multiply inwards to both sets. Um, 4 times 2, well, that's just 8. And then 4 times negative 3 root 4. Well, uh, to think about this in a slightly different way, uh, we need to consider 4 as the same thing as 4, whoops, same thing as 4 root 1. And what that means is I'm going to multiply the roots, uh, the radicals by radicals, and then the outsides of the radicals are just going to be multiplied by the outsides of the radicals. So what that means is I'm going to have minus, and then 4 times 3, which is 12, and then root 4. And then from here we always say, well, what is the square root of 4? Well, that's 2. So it ends up being 8 minus 12 times 2, or 8 minus 24, whoops, 8 minus 24, which equals negative 16. That's one set of radicals. Uh, using the distributive property. Now another kind that we're going to look at that you'll probably see is say you'll have something to the effect of 2 minus 3 root 5 times um, 3 plus 2 root 4. And this is really similar to the good old FOIL method using the distributive property but what I like to do is, instead of doing the FOIL method, and for those of you that are like, wow, what the heck is the FOIL method? That's when you do first uh, or outside, you do uh, first and then inside and then last. And for me, it's just a guarantee to make a mistake. Uh, so the way that I like to think of this is I like to use the box method. Um, so here we go. Let's make ourselves a box. Make this really neat and tidy. Oop. So there's that and then that. Aren't you guys impressed with my, oops, my box method here? This cool command that draws straight lines for me. Oops, didn't get that one to work. Okay, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the first portion and I'm just going to write 2 minus 3 root 5 up here. And then I'm going to do 3 plus 2 root 4. Um, there's the positive part. And then I'm just going to work my way through this. So 3 times 2, well that's 6. And then 3 times negative 3 root 5. Remember, we're going to do the outside numbers and then worry about the radicals or the radicands inside. That gives me negative 9 root 5. And then 2 times 2 root 4 is uh, 4 root 4. And we'll simplify this in just a little bit. And then lastly, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then radicals is going to be root 20. Okay, from here, I'll get 6 minus 9 root 5 um, plus 4 root 4 minus 6 root 20. And is there anything that we can simplify? I think there is. Uh, we can probably find the square root of 4 right in here. So that's going to be 4 times 2, which is just 8. And then if I pull this apart, well, I can do... 4 times 5, which is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 5. And remember, we're looking for chunks of 2. So these 2's actually go outside of the radical. We have a different color here. Um, and you end up with 6 times 2 root 5, which ends up equaling, arrow here, um, 12 root 5. And the cool thing now is that Here's another root 5 over here. So we can add those together and then let's do in another color green. We can add this one and this term together. Okay, so when we ultimately put everything together, well, we have 6 plus 8, 14. And then when I add the blue parts together, well, I'm going to get negative 9 root 5 
plus 12 root 5, um, and so that's going to give me um, plus 3 root 5. And that's my final solution right there. Cool. All right, next up, using conjugates.